back to my stream. We're going to start recording now. So obviously, this is Defender Spawn. And as a fair zone, it's mirrored. So let's go over the different callouts starting at term. Here's terminal, raider door, raider connector, raider pillar, mid pillar, mid drop, mid vents, defender pillar, defender door, defender connector, defender mid, raider mid, or mid, terminal mid, just call it terminal mid, terminal. Again. Raider door, raider pillar, mid pillar, mid vent, drop, defender pillar, defender door, defender connector, and mid, term mid. So anyway, and of course, raider connector, raider door, raider spawn trap, head glitch right here, you can't see me at all. You can somehow get here. And of course, defender spawn trap is right here. Obviously for the Raiders to use against us. So again, this is all defender route. That's defender door. This is mid. Usually a lot of people play mid for no reason. It's not good. Trust me. Terminal, mid, defender connector, defender door, defender pillar. So if they're coming mid from over here, you want to have glitch right here. On mid terminal, have glitch right here. Okay. You could also have a crossfire on your connector or their connector. Stay put. So the first push, I'm just going to walk in a straight line. I started a little late, so I'll get there at 13. All right, about 13 seconds, right? Let's try this again. I'm going to spawn again as at 20 seconds. Ready, set, and go. So I'm going to run. Depending on my spawn, it's going to be good or not. First push, you hold straight line. Always. First push, you hold a straight line. And it's all about rallying up here. It took about 12 seconds, right? 11, 12 seconds for me to get here. So let's try this as a team really quick. I want you to follow me when I respawn you all. I want to respawn you in five seconds when it hits 50. Ready? And you're gonna you're gonna walk with me. Don't be the last person. Ready, set, and go. Go. Walk. Just walk straight line. The first life we have, we always walk in a straight line. Because we want to path towards uh, objective faster than the enemy. So about 12 seconds, mm -hmm. right? Let's try this again. But follow me this time. Around. So after this, we, we go over here. Every other death, we go over here because of mid. Because we can get killed from mid. And that's a natural way to use cover. So about a second or like a half a second, a mm -hmm. little shorter. I mean, a little longer. But it's worth it because if you're here, damage all 99. Let's see. Let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10 and look, look it's, it's just dumb if you heal here so i'm going to respond myself and look one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven and look at my health versus yours i could just reset right now so you guys should just all reset because it's not worth healing here you should just reset go ahead and i'll come here quickly quickly and go around go around over here because you got to avoid the people mid. They're shooting at you mid. And you see you have 100 health. So why would you sit here and heal and be useless when you could just quickly reset and be 100 health in a matter of 11 seconds plus 3 and a half seconds because it takes that long to respawn, right? Because you, if you get drained, look at me. I'm useless. I'm resetting. Because I'm so close to spawn. I'm not going to do that if I'm like 90 health or higher, right? So let's try this again. Like this, it's okay. Like I could get there. And I'm going to go there to the end. That was damage 30. So I had 72, 73 health, 74, 75. And I'm okay here. Look at me. I'll teleport. I'm okay. I'm, I basically already healed up, right? 
So like 30 is okay or less. So like if you get shot twice in the head, you'll be okay to keep running. If you get shot anymore, I'm just resetting. Obviously, I'm not going to like just keep resetting and letting this guy stay 100 health. But like, let's say I kill him and I'm like, I kill him on this health, I'm going to reset. Okay, that's what I mean. Let's say it takes you longer than 12 seconds to get here. Let's say it takes you 15 seconds to get here consistently. Well, that's the difference of three seconds, right? 15 minus 12 is three. And how many times do you get to respawn? Depending on how much you die, of course, right? How long does the match last? It depends. But I don't know. Maybe you could have like 40 deaths potentially, right? So 40 times three, that's 120 seconds. So basically, you're wasting 120 seconds of your life in the game just walking. And that's 120 seconds wasted where you, and instead you could have been in position for frags. All right, so again, we're talking about this map. So let's see. Everyone follow me on vents. Ready? Respawn. Three, two, one, go. We're going to go this way. And don't push each other off because we all got to wait for the last person in the line. Don't be the last person. And go path, cut corners, don't bump into the corner, but go really close and go all the way. So it was about 1635. Let's do the math. About 20 seconds now. Stop. About 25, you could drop. About 25 seconds to get here versus a 11 second, 12 second push over here, it's main. And when we talk about player value, it's about these three factors. And this applies to any map, any four, just Roblox comma in general. It's all about this. Uh, player value, it's about three categories. And this is, of course, number one, individual skill. So that's important. I'll explain all these. Number two is the class you're on. Number three is the positioning. So, for example, if you're the individual skill, whether you're an elite versus a noob, right? any extreme, any way around that, or somewhere in the middle, that determines your value as a player. So obviously, an elite is typically more valued than a noob. Second all is a class. So an ST or a recon is technically one of the most valuable people versus someone who's like, um, I don't know, like a riot trooper or someone who doesn't really get a lot of kills in comparison, right? Like So depending on the class you are, you might be limited. So if you're on recon, you're actually really good at getting kills and stuff, but Probably not for pocketing. It, it matters if you kill their enemy recon, right? Because it's like, oh, damn, Like now our team could reinforce safely and they won't get picked. It's a big deal if you pick off the enemy recon or the enemy STs. Trying to push an ST out a door, that's really annoying, right? Versus any other class, much easier, right? So class could determine your value. And third, last but not least, is positioning. So if the closer you are to your spawn, the more useless you are. The further away you are from your spawn, the more valuable as a player you are. Another way to think about this is, if you're at terminal, you're very valuable because you're able to defend terminal and recap. But if you just died, you're pretty much useless for however long it takes to go back there safely, right? So let's talk about some scenarios and just look at my stream. So here's some examples. So my value from spawn to here is worth about 12 seconds, just clean numbers, 11, 12 seconds, 100 health as well, right? If I'm 50 or less health, like you're pretty useless here because it's going to take you quite a while to heal versus to reset. So technically, your value is only good here if you're like 70 plus health. So otherwise, you might as well just reset. Because like if you're like 80, 85 plus, you're okay, even if you get hit once here. But otherwise, you might just reset. You might just like run out. If you're one shot, you might as well just reset. You know what I mean? So sometimes, let's say the enemy knows that and they're smart. They might let you stay alive because you're, you're a dead man walking. So that way, they will kill you before you pause. But you basically waste your time. So that way, you're actually not dangerous at all for however long you're kept alive, plus the 12 seconds. So sometimes I like to keep people alive. Like, let's say we're doing a retake, and then there's, like, this guy, and he's basically dead. And I'm not going to push him because I want to heal, but I also want him to spawn separately from his team. So that way, his team has to wait for him if they want a full man push. 
and then the positioning to allow such things to happen, like, okay, a crossfire. What's the most valuable position? And that position is the furthest away from your spawn. Why is this the most valuable? Number one, it's the furthest away from your spawn, so it's the most difficult to reach here. Number two, you have a really nasty crossfire on anyone, and this spot is the least likely to be occupied by your team. Therefore, it's very valuable and very difficult to get to. Therefore, you know, you have a lot of impact here. So whenever you think of any for any base, any raid place, typically think of the best spot to defend that's further away from your spawn. This is a really golden spot. It's a really golden opportunity. And you usually want to go here whenever possible because you can just count all their heads. Micro website player says, okay, if I see the if I don't if I see them and they're not here, then I'm gonna go over here. And now I'm safe from mid pillar. Because here's the angle. I could get killed easily. So I'm gonna look for shadows. I'm gonna look for the gun sticking out a little, okay? I'm also gonna see if there's any names here. Is my teammate name here? Yes, it's safe. Is my teammate names not here and they just dropped? How long does this take? Maybe about eight seconds. I could stay here for eight seconds and then I gotta watch out. Okay? You want to think about how fast it will take for the enemy to path as well. Positioning is also getting into position where you could get a lot of kills or damage. So even if you are greedy, as a greedy player, you still have the incentive to want to path properly and not just be an idiot. So, regardless, every player needs to understand pathing because it's the quickest way to action. How can we speedrun to the action so that way we're always in the action? If you only have one life to work with, you're obviously only get one life worth of damage. Now, what do people typically do on a fair zone like this or any fair zone? You want to understand what that is, the common strat? Because sure, you could mirror, but then it's just a skill difference to determine the winner. It's not really much strategy. And we want to utilize all the factors we can to try to win as much as we can. So it's not just the skill difference, but you know the leadership and tactical difference when it comes to strategy. So normally a lot of people like to run in mid, right? Because people like to, they're attracted towards the action. They're attracted towards chaos. They want kills. They want that nice kill feed for their, their montage. It makes them look good, right? It helps them sleep at night too. Well, it doesn't help them win. Maybe in their ego it does. Maybe on the leaderboard it says they are. Because they're a top frag, but... No, that's not the objective. That's not how you want as a team. So just know, are you playing for yourself and being selfish and losing? Potentially, basically, I say losing because you're not maximizing your capability as teamwork. Or are you playing for the team trying to win the match to get that victory on the leaderboard as a team, as a clan, right? It doesn't say, oh, victory won by this warrior. No, it's usually the leader and the clan, right? You need a minimum of two teams. Your biggest team should most likely be the Defender Door team. It's about a 12 second reinforcement time. And then you have a small team, about one to three people, depending on server size, of course, that are, um, they will be the event team. I recommend giving up mid because there's too much variables there. There are too many variables. It's all about skill difference and whoever gets there first. But even so, it's not really that worth it, in my opinion, because they're going to get to this. Look at my screen. They're going to get here first. Like, you get here at the same time in here. It's not like you're going to cut them off in this corner at all. It's just too annoying. To, don't do it. Play objective, guys. Vent team, direct counters, pillars. You need people to go vents to counter anyone. Mid pillar, defender pillar, raider pillar. And then have everyone on our team push at the same time to find our door. That's basically the strat. And then if they fully retake it, take your time to go around their spawn and split push from all three sides. So what's the meta? I didn't even tell you about events. Let's talk about events. So you would also have a vent team. And either way, it's fine. I just say cut corners and be ready to aim either way. Check this. Why do we not use this cubby? Because of that. And because your whole body is exposed. This is really dumb. So I'm going to invite you 
R to look how dumb this is. And just stay here and just look in the game. Look if you could see me. And look at my body. Look how easy it is to kill me, right? Even if I crouch. And now look how annoying or pain in the ass I am if I'm back here. Where I could head glitch you over here or over here or in the middle. So when you're defending vents, you need to abuse a head glitch. And you could be in the middle, you could hug the wall, you could be on this side, right? And it's much better than being here, because why do, why do people go here? Because people see it's obvious, but they don't think we're their brain. And this is dumb too, okay? You want to be further away. Always think about exposing the least amount of part of your body as possible if you're ever playing at any map. Anything could be made into a head glitch. Any little thing could be made into a head glitch. You could counter that counter if you look. See my gun? So I don't want to be too far back, right? But let's say let's say I'm defender. Am I gun sticking out here? You can't see me over here. My team could see me though. I'm okay here. But it's most likely that the raiders won't be on the side of the map, right? So just think. Just use your brain, guys. Like no, there's always a counter to a counter to a counter. Okay. It's also like playing poker. In theory, this is the perfect slow push. Octavia SSK, you could drop. Just so you could see us. This is actually the perfect split push. Like, let's say they're all term. Pretend you guys are up there still. And by the way, look at my stream, everyone. This team up here. Like, you're going to look at the kill feed. And make sure none of them are dying. So that way, you guys don't get shot in the back. And you're going to do this. No gun out. Shift lock. Zoom out. And you're going to make callouts and, like, know where they are. So, okay, Raider Pillar. Mid pillar. I can check both sides. Okay, are they defender pillar? Are they on the blue crate or the gray crate over there on the corner? Are they connector? Are they mid? Are they pushing mid, far mid? Where are they exactly, right? And I can check all this. I can check all these angles to see where they are. So vent team, usually you're the ones with the mic as well. Um, I'd say the most important mic I had to have one mic was the main vent, the main door team. But in theory, you could do a split push, and vents typically, it depends. Like Usually, the first thing they're going to see is the main door team, defender door team, because it's the most predictable and expected, and there's most of you there. We could do a split push from their door, so that way we could kill this angle easily. We could kill this angle, this angle, this angle, um, even this angle a little bit, because mid pillar, it's mid pillar, and this raider door that are teaming up to kill pillars. You gotta kill pillar people first, typically. They're the most annoying people to to deal with. And then of course you could push connector. So this team pushes a connector and that team pushes a connector. And these guys kill a pillar team and then anyone else about dying, they stay alive. Even if they're one health, just don't peek, stay alive. Because of positioning, you're not useless because of positioning. That one moment, because you're coordinating with a team. But if you two are the last ones alive and they're both one shot, just reset. So in theory, that's the perfect retake if they're all on terminal and nobody's dying, right? Have a full team terminal. That's the best way to retake. I'm not safe here, really, or here. I mean, I'm up here, yes, but down here, it's really bad. So if you're ever going to have people, you want to stack them up because they have more cover to work with. I'm safe from mid. I'm safe from, from door. All right, here's a head glitch. For example, if anyone's jumping up here, if I know they're going to peek up here, right? It's like a passive angle to have glitch. If they're only coming from here, right? If I know that. Um, like, right? But they could see me through this. Here's the most obvious head glitch. Crouch though as well. Pop shoot. This could be a head glitch, technically. Someone's up here. This corner. I don't believe that's like awesome. anything can be made into a head glitch. Some of them are situational, some of them are useless, right? Even th this is not the best head glitch, but it's still a, a head Like, I just always think about head glitches. Peek from different angles. One little angle as well, one cheeky angle. You could consider head glitching uh, mid, reversed.
but I wouldn't really rely on it. It's actually not that good. Um, it's only very, it's very situational. Like, assuming they're all terminal. And then you watch the kill feed. And then remember, count down. Let's see. Look. Let's see. Um, team all raiders. Let's go. Follow me. One, two, and go mid. Like an idiot. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. About like eight seconds until you can get shot again. Okay. 